What is up guys, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're covering r slash tales from your server. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell. And don't forget to turn your notification bell on to always, because <laughs> YouTube is always trying to do me over. And with that being said, let's get started. Much love guys. Our first story is from Manic Pandiculation. I hope I got that right. I guess you are barred for a reason. I bartend at a local bar. Usually my customers are fine and the worst I get is someone hitting on me. Tonight, there was a woman at the bar who had been in some trouble in the past. Now I know this woman carries her ID on her and she's been a regular enough for me to know that, but the man she's with is a newbie. So I asked for his ID. The woman, W. Oh my God, you're so anal about that. You're gonna drive away customers if you keep asking for IDs like that. I said, I'm sorry, I know it's annoying, but I can get in trouble if I don't ask. That's fucking ridiculous. You're gonna lose customers if you keep being a bitch about it. I shrug, I don't make the laws, but I don't have $500 to pay the fine. Besides, most people don't mind and like that their bartender is responsible. I don't believe you. If you really have a problem, owner is gonna be here in about half an hour and you can talk to him. The woman then says, you know, I'm just waiting until they let you go and get a better bartender. At this point, I give her and the guy their drinks and walk to the other side of the bar. An hour later, the owner arrives with his daughter and I let him know the situation and tell him that I'm going to cut her off if she continues to make a scene. She says, you know I love you. I don't hold grudges, but you know, you should really smile more. You'll get more tips. She doesn't ever tip me though. I say, mom, if you continue to tell me how to do my job or continue to make rude comments, you will not be served any more drinks tonight. The woman scoffs gives me the middle fingers and tells me to fuck off. She then turns to the owner sitting next to her and says, your bartender just cut me off. And she expects him to allow her to continue drinking. The owner shrugs and says, that's the bartender's decision, not mine. I wave goodbye as she storms out. Ironically, I couldn't stop smiling as she left. The owner and the owner's daughter told me that I handled the situation well and that the woman used to be barred, but was just unbarred a few years back before I started working here. At the end of the day, I just love that the owner has my back and I didn't have to deal with any shitty customers like that. And you shouldn't, you know, it's just a job like any other job. I don't know why people think that people in restaurants have to deal with shitty customers. They should be instantly shown the door. Customer isn't always right and that's just the way it is. Our next story is from SpideyFan69. You can't just accommodate 45 to 60 people on a Friday night. I'm the GM of a small bar slash restaurant tucked away in the upper middle class neighborhood. We have a ton of regulars since the neighborhood is a bunch of older folks with expendable income and young families. When I say this place is small, I mean it's small, 54 seats in the bar, for the volume we can crank out, especially on weekends. Well, some of my staff get an email for a party on Friday night. Already 45 people have RSVP'd to this party in the restaurant's bar without my knowledge or our owners. I'm pissed and so is my owner. How the hell do these people expect us to accommodate them on a Friday with no designated space to serve them? No notice to bring on extra staff. It's not like we have a separate banquet room or anything. Finally, someone from my party calls to speak to my never present owner after she tried contacting them. So instead being the GM, I take the call. I speak to the person and try to make it very clear. Number one, we will need credit cards as soon as anything is ordered. We've had this issue of folks leaving with substantial tabs. Two, we have very limited parking. I ask for as many people to carpool as possible. Three, because it's Friday, the busiest night of the week, I can only reserve one small section for them till our regular dinner service is over. Then they can migrate and take more tables, but I cannot sacrifice the experience of other paying customers not a part of this group. I also make it clear if they had talked to us before basically forcing our hand, we could have done more for them. For example, if they wanted this party on a Monday or Tuesday, I would have gladly let them have half the bar or more. I emphasize this point nicely because only a few people in this group of 45 plan on having dinner. 90% of our patrons in our bar order dinner on top of multiple drinks, which means more in sales. Duh. Number four, I ask them to please reach out on the day before with an approx headcount, so I know in addition to another server, what other staff I should bring in. Well, after all that, these people do the most to try and get me in trouble with my boss, the owner. Saying I was rude, snarky, and because I was concerned with other paying customers and not just them, they're taking their party elsewhere. 
My boss was 100% on my side. These people, why they may be regulars, they're the worst kind of regulars. They get drunk, loud, obnoxious, tip like shit, and think we owe them something because they come in often. My boss and I are a lot alike, which can sometimes cause issues, but I'm glad this time we're both on the same page. I'm trying to run a business on her behalf. Again, man, it's like, Customers thinking they're always right. Oh, I imagine that's what all these stories are going to be like. <laughs> you know, tales from your server. Customer always thinks they're right and trying to shit on people. Ah, oh, it winds me up, it does. And I've never been a server in my life. <laughs> the next story is from I'm a Good Coder. To the people that left me $20 on a $45 after their fried rice came out raw, thank you. Yesterday I had a couple with a pretty easy order. Fried rice and beef and broccoli. When I checked back after two minutes, they called me over and showed me that their fried rice, which was raw, gummy, and basically inedible. I apologized profusely on the kitchen's behalf, and went right away to make another one. Five minutes later, I had a brand new fried rice from the chef and brought out an additional beef and broccoli to complement their first one. I let them know that I was worried that their beef and broccoli would get cold while they were waiting for their fried rice remake, so I brought them a new one. As luck would have it, the second fried rice was fucked too. Raw, gummy, basically disgusting to look at. Now I had to get a manager visit. Fuck. My manager kindly offered them a free dessert to go. We also took off the fried rice, obviously, and the cokes off the check. I must have apologized about 10 times, but they were pretty cool about it and let me know it wasn't my fault. At the end, they left me a $20 on a $45. Literally made my night, and I know we screwed up their fried rice twice, so they had every reason to be upset. If you guys are out there, I just want to say thanks and you're the best. Edit. We had two pots of rice and the first one was from the first pot, which is definitely no good. But we used the second pot, which I thought was better since it was less gummy. Looking at the second remake, it seemed fine, but I guess I should have actually tasted it with a spoon to make sure it wasn't like the first one, so I guess I'm partially to blame. They also shared a glass and a half of wine as well as an appetizer. I didn't include that in the story because it didn't seem relevant. Sorry about that. Total was wine $13, beef $18, overpriced I know, appetizer $10 approximately $45 after tax. Wow, there's some big tippers though, but I totally get where they're coming from. Like when something goes wrong in a restaurant, I know some people get really shitty and they try and get freebies, out of, but I'm just, you just got to put yourself in their shoes and think what they're going through. Like you're apologizing 10 times. You must've been anxious as hell at that moment. And that's what I, whenever something's going wrong for someone else, you try to put yourself in their shoes and try and sympathize with them because you don't want to ruin other people's night just for that. Just for one little mistake, do you? I mean, come on, man. Our next story is from a whole bunch of numbers. Man doesn't read sign, but rates entire staff. This is something I observed years ago. I don't work at a restaurant myself, but this story belongs here. I was at a Chinese buffet minding my own business when the man behind me just starts yelling at his waitress. And I mean absolutely tearing into her. He was throwing shit around the table, slamming his hands down and making the whole booth shake. I can't remember what kind of things he was saying, but he was upset that he was charging an extra $7 for the crab legs on the buffet. Not only does it very clearly say on the sign outside that crab legs are in addition with $7, but there's a sign directly above the crab legs themselves in big red letters stating it. And our waitress told us when we sat down that they were extra, so I can only assume he did this too. Even more, in the menu next to the buffet price, it said, again in big red letters, that the crab legs weren't including the buffet price despite being on the buffet. So the guy had no excuse not to know and was yelling at this woman who barely spoke English. She knew enough to be able to do her job, but not enough to talk this man down from the ledge. All the other servers came over to help calm him down, but he just couldn't be contained. Everyone in the dining area was staring at him while he threw his tantrum. The manager finally came over, who barely spoke better English than his staff. And the man just kept saying he was going to call the city and have this place shut down. This is false advertisement and he wants his entire meal for free. I could almost, maybe, in some distant world see it being justified to have the extra $7 taken off for him and his wife if they truly did somehow miss every single sign they weren't included, but not his entire meal for free. That's absurd. So it's clear to me, everyone in the dining room and the staff that this guy's just trying his hardest to get his meal for free. I'd just finished eating when I left. He was still arguing with a manager who did at one point show him every single instance where it was posted that the crab legs weren't included in the price. I wanted to step in so bad but was afraid to because based on his actions and the way his wife looked, I guess he was an abusive husband. She looked terrified, just keeping her head down and not saying a word. I wish there was something more I could have done but I wasn't trying to get my ass beat. 
If there's justice in the world, the restaurant didn't cave in and made him pay for his whole meal. I left before it was resolved. It honestly felt like one of those, what would you do sketches? The wife was probably just too embarrassed about the shenanigans, you know, it's just too crazy. But yeah, as the guy said at the end, what would you do in that situation? Would you step in or would you just sort of like watch it all go down? Our next story is from Tame Wild Child. Lady, I'm not holding you hostage. We all know we get money from turns. If you have cashed out, get out. My restaurant only has three table sections and one table lingering for an hour after paying causes me to miss a turn, which can give me anywhere from 20 to $40 on a dinner shift. So, last night my first table is a couple. I'd guess in their early 50s, well-dressed, must have a little money, very particular, but were nice enough, albeit a bit weird. They asked me if they could soak their utensils and I told them we couldn't allow that, but I'd be more than happy to clean the new set and bring it to them, so I did. I soaked the new set in the hot water, sprayed it with our vinegar slash water concoction, painstakingly checked every inch of the silverware and set it on the napkins for them at the table. The woman was annoyed that a spinach dip didn't have salmon in it and I had to explain what a Brussels sprout was. Typically, we remark utensils between courses, but because they were so particular and this woman kept cleaning her fork with sliced lemons, I let her keep their utensils. They ate and paid out with Amex at the end of their service. I dropped the closed check and their card with a pen, copy to be signed on top, said goodbye, thank you, been a pleasure, blah blah, and went on to continue servicing my other needy tables. This whole time the couple is sitting, chatting, with cash on the tip tray I left for them, which I assumed was my tip. I was a bit miffed that they were still there, but busy enough, so I didn't say anything to them. Finally, as I'm at the POS ringing an unholy order riddled with modifications, the wife walks up to me and the following exchange occurs. W. Wife. We need to leave. I say, uh, okay, bye. We need to leave now. I'm clearly confused. Okay, so you can go. W. Stares at me angrily. I say, um, remember the cash has been sitting on the table. Are you trying to pay or something? The woman says, yes. You paid an hour ago with an American Express card, which I set in front of you with a pen when I said goodbye, so... And the W was shocked and went, Oh! She and her husband leave. I go over and check the table. They took their cash and didn't leave a tip. I was so flawed, I couldn't even be upset about it. One of the vibes I got through this whole story is that this is someone that's been serving for a long time. <laughs> they just don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> Servers, who's watching this right now? If... That is the case, like you're trying to get people out of the, off the tables and stuff. How do you do that? How do you approach someone to get them off your table? Do you just tell them they've got to go now or do you somehow encourage them? I'd love to know how you do that. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed these stories. If you did, I'd love you to comment below, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We're all about community on this channel and it means everything. And with that being said, I will see you on the next one. Much love, guys.